Hey, this is Mr. Spencer. How you guys doing? I am sad to say that I'm all alone here in the classroom. <laughs> Where is everybody? Well, we're reading F. Scott Fitzgerald this week. He's the author of The Great Gatsby, and I'm pretty excited to start The Great Gatsby. Before we do, though, we're going to talk a little bit about how F. Scott Fitzgerald's writing style differs from other authors you're used to. We just read Ernest Hemingway's In Another Country, and we're starting Fitzgerald's story, Bernice Bobs Her Hair. So as I do my screen share here, you'll see I've got the lesson for day two, Tuesday and Wednesday this week. We're reading the first part of Bernice Bobs Her Hair up to page eight. The story's broken into chapters, so it's basically like Roman numerals one through six. So we're reading the first three Roman numeral chapters, okay, up to page eight. Got a character named Bernice and a character named Marjorie. If you've ever seen the movie Mean Girls, it might look a little familiar to you, but this story was published in 1920. We're at the beginning of the Roaring Twenties. We have a very young F. Scott Fitzgerald here writing. All right, so going over a little bit of the story here, I've got a copy of it. Do you see it on my screen? Bernice bobs her hair, okay? The beginning of the story, we, we've got long sentences, very descriptive, okay? Run-on sentences, these are usually going to slow down the pace of the prose text, and you'll see a dry and overly deliberate tone and writing style. Fitzgerald is very dry at the beginning of the story, yet he's not such a dry, I don't want to say boring, but... Um, straightforward, overly descriptive writer all the time. One thing he's really good at is dialogue, the voices that people use to talk. And you'll see a pretty clear tone shift at the bottom of page two. When characters start talking, the tone shift is very, very abrupt and dramatic. The tone of the story becomes much more playful and flirtatious, just like these young teenagers in the story are. All right, so flirting and dancing is kind of a principal topic for these teenagers here. But let me take you to the first paragraph because something happens pretty interesting I want to show you. Okay, we got Bernice bobs her hair there. You see the bob haircut? It's it's like a short style. I mean, if you look it up on Google, you're going to see all sorts of examples. Um, I don't know too much about hairstyles, but I know my wife has considered this kind of hairstyle before, and it looks pretty popular when you just look it up. But we're looking at, okay, the 1920s. This was radical. This was symbolic, and it was rebellious for many women. It, it represented the modern woman, okay, with a capital M, right? We're talking about modernism. So that's like when I take out that blue paper and we go through all those literary periods, okay? We're talking about the age of modernism. Got it? Okay, so at the beginning of the story, it's 1920. Fitzgerald's a very young writer. Okay, I think he's about 24 years old when he first published this. It's one of his first published short stories. It's about um, five years before The Great Gatsby was published. We don't get flirting or dancing at the beginning of the story. We don't get haircuts or boys and girls talking at the beginning of the story. We get an ocean. So I want to highlight this here. The water, the waves of the ocean, so to speak, it says were what? It's an extended metaphor describing the way the waves move, the ebb and flow of the waves, to caddies, men at this golf course. We're at like an expensive rich country club, and they've got a golf course. So they're chauffeurs for these rich people and caddies, the people who carry the golf clubs for the golfers. And then he has a, this is not literal, figuratively making a little playful metaphor here about the golf professional's deaf sister, the chauffeur. They're not supposed to talk or interact with any other rich people. Okay, this is a class comment, social classes. Okay, we got the lower, the middle, and the upper class. And sometimes that lower class is called the servant class. You might think of the chauffeur as the servant class there. So these other waves are other kids, other people in the gallery. We get a big country club, like in the big foyer. And as you walk into the building at the front of the country club, there's a balcony and a ballroom and a bunch of kids are going to dance on a Saturday night. Okay, so like a winter formal or a prom, these things we used to have way back in the day before pandemics, people would actually dance together and people would encourage them to dance. You were encouraged to get closer, um, maybe not as close as six inches, but like not six feet apart. You understand me? So we start with the water. I want to go over why water is so important to Fitzgerald because it's a very important motif and symbol throughout the Great Gatsby and his other writing. Okay, golf is a motif we'll see, and it's like a rich, fancy, you got to have like money to have a 
what membership to the golf club and you've got to have money to afford golf clubs and golfing materials and accessories. So we get a rich sort of milieu there. And why water is so important is we're talking about F. Scott Fitzgerald and his wife, Zelda Fitzgerald. All right, Zelda and F. Scott Fitzgerald were like the it couple. All right, super famous. Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, Kim and Kanye, whatever you want to call it. Um, Bieber and is it Selena? Selena Gomez? I think they broke up a long time ago, but I'm trying to think of like, what would, what would young boomers today know about a couple that's very famous? Okay. Okay. Not Mac Miller and Ariana Grande, not Pete Davidson and Ariana Grande. I don't know who she's dating anymore, but this is Scott and Zelda. Super famous in the magazines, on magazine covers. People thought they were super interesting because he was now a famous writer publishing his books and his short stories. She was a famous um, muse, a painter. She inspired her husband. So they were photographed a lot and they were very famous at the time and friends with people like Ernest Hemingway. Okay, so F. Scott, Zelda, uh, we, we're just going to call him Scott Fitzgerald. That's what him and all his friends called him, Scott Fitzgerald, and his wife Zelda, very famous. But one thing that's interesting about them is they love to swim. And it's interesting that when uh, the, the stories around Montgomery, Alabama, when they were first met, that's the house that they lived in here. Can I do the satellite imagery here? Where is that? Uh, satellite imagery. Is there a way to do it? There we go. F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda Fitzgerald. That's the house and museum they lived on. Where are we? We're in Alabama. Okay. They grew up in the South. Okay. And that's where their house was. And Montgomery is where Zelda grew up. And that's right around where um, Scott met Zelda. Okay. So she was a diver and she loved swimming. And it was kind of a fancy, fun thing for kids to do back then. So one hot day in July, rumor has it, Scott drove over to where Zelda was for a day trip to the local pool. This is 1916, so we're like four years before Bernice Bob's Her Hair was published. I want to talk about why water and swimming was so important. According to Friends of Zelda, she was remembered as a beautiful, glamorous teenager in Montgomery, Alabama. And she scandalized onlookers at the local swimming dives and pools because she wore a one-piece flesh-colored bathing suit. I don't know, it's not a tankini or a bikini, but it was a one-piece flesh-colored bathing suit, okay? I couldn't find a good black and white picture that showed like a, a, a flesh-colored bathing suit. But do you understand? It gave the illusion that she was swimming naked. And this is 1916. So she's like this young 18, 19 year old girl and she's flirting and scandalizing people like Scott Fitzgerald who are looking on at her. Okay, men of the time wore bathing suits like this, very, very glamorous and exciting. I'm sure you're interested in that. But girls of the time wore usually uh, bathing suits that covered up a lot. And so when you get a girl like Zelda coming down to the local swimming hole and she's wearing something that's actually revealing a lot of skin, it was pretty scandalous of the time, the flesh-colored bathing suit of Zelda, okay? You see Olympic divers like this in the 1920s, but this is kind of the difference that we had. All right, so that's something I'm gonna talk about at the beginning of the story, okay? You'll see a very clear shift when the dialogue is introduced with characters like Marjorie and Warren. And I'm gonna compare Marjorie to a character like from Mean Girls, she's the Regina George character. Okay, Regina George is somebody that was played by uh, Rachel McAdams in the movie Mean Girls. If you've never seen it, it's not a big deal. But she's the one that's like the, the, the queen of the plastics. She's the one that's like most uh, the alpha and kind of cruel and mean to the other girls. But she uses her personality to sort of control a lot of the other girls. What's this have to do with the story? Well, pay attention to the character of Marjorie. She's very much like that. Bernice, not quite as popular, not quite as charming. Okay, so she's a different character that we're looking at. Okay, I'm gonna end this video here. In the next video, I'm gonna summarize a little bit more about Bernice Bob's her hair, and then we'll talk about what's going on with the choices F. Scott Fitzgerald makes with his long sentences. What is he doing there?